The ultimate laksa is such a magical triumph of spices, aromatics, flavors, like all the feels. I love a really good bowl of laksa, as you can tell. Now, I love to make it from scratch when I have the time. So my Malaysian curry laksa recipe is my go-to for when I really just want to get stuck in there, have a great day of blending spices and aromatics and all the things. But you know, there's some times where I want a good bowl of laksa, but I've only got about 15 minutes. Now, my easy cheats curry laksa, that one is going to come in handy when you just need to save a bit of time. All right, I hope you enjoy them both, guys. Have fun. Laksa lemak, one of my all-time favorite versions of laksa, also known as curry laksa. It's a specialty in Malaysia, served in Singapore as well. Now I've got some dried chilies here. I've had them soaking in some hot water. I always like to put a little bowl or a plate on top, make sure that all the chilies are getting a good soaking. And then just squeeze out some of that water, trim off any really firm bits, and then just slice those. Now save the chili soaking liquid in case we need some of that to moisten up our mixture as it blends. You'll see what I mean later on. Uh, the next thing we need is some galangal and some ginger. And I thought I'd show you these guys side by side because if you have a look, the galangal is a lot paler. It's pink in color. Uh, now the galangal has a lot more of a kind of citrusy pine forest kind of aroma and flavor, whereas the ginger is a little bit deeper and mellower. You want both for this one. And I just slice off some galangal, just peel off the outside layer. Now, if you don't get to your Asian grocer very often, buy a whole bunch of galangal and ginger. They freeze really well. Just cut them into kind of like four centimeter portions. Generally, that's what you're using for a recipe. And then you've got them there, ready and waiting. And the ginger. I also need some garlic here and some red Asian shallots. These ones are really small, so I'm just gonna leave them whole and pop them straight in the blender. And some lemongrass. And now once you've bruised that lemongrass, just slice the end off and then peel off that outer layer. It's always really tough and it doesn't really blend up very well. And just finally slice that inner part. And you want some coriander root here as well. And then these guys here, uh, macadamia nuts. Now traditionally you would use what's called candle nuts which look very similar but they're a lot firmer and a lot more bitter than macadamia nuts but even I have trouble finding candle nuts here in Thailand so I thought you guys might as well. Macadamias will do it a pinch, kind of adds a little bit of a creaminess and thickens up the sauce a little bit. Now we get to some real pungent little flavors here. I've got some dried shrimp that I've had soaking in some water that's to soften them a little bit. So I'll just get them out of that water. And some shrimp paste. So shrimp paste is one of those ingredients that I recommend just using. Don't smell it. Uh, it has a very funky smell, but it'll add a kind of uh, savory umami flavor to your laksa that you won't get with just using salt. So a little dash of that. And now the spices. So I want some turmeric and some coriander seeds. Dash of salt. And now spoon in some of that liquid to help your blender blades kind of get through all those aromatics. A lot of people like to add oil here, but I find the oil emulsifies like it would with a mayonnaise, which is sort of the wrong texture. and also seems to affect the flavor as well. So water is much better. And blend. Now, unless you have one of those super high powered like restaurant quality blenders, you're gonna need to give this a little bit of love. So use your spoon to push everything down in there. And it looks to me like everything's still kind of chopped rather than being blended and pureed. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water here. All right, so this is the kind of texture that we're after here. I don't mind it being a little bit bitsy because then people kind of know that it's homemade and I didn't use the store-bought paste, which is totally fine as well, by the way. But uh, it is wonderful to be making this from scratch when you do have the time. And if you can find a laksa paste at your regular supermarket or you've got one in the cupboard, that's great. I often find they're a little bit more difficult to get a hold of than Thai red curry paste. So I'm actually gonna use red curry paste as my base here. There are a lot of similar ingredients in a Thai red curry paste and a laksa paste. A lot of different ones too, but it will work out in the end, trust me. Prawn 
stock. So to do that, I start off with some oil and then I've got some prawn shells here, the heads and the shells, and I'm gonna use the prawn meat later, but these guys are gonna flavor our stock. Now I want these guys to sizzle away for a few minutes so that all of their essential flavors and oils and aromas go into the pot. All right, so let's see how our prawn shells are doing. And it's exactly what I'm looking for. I kind of want to use my spoon to press down on some of these prawn heads and release all of that good red stuff inside. Now, if you're Asian or half Asian like me, then you would have had a mother telling you to eat your prawn heads because they're very good for you. So in my mum's book, this would be a very healthy dish. Now see all that lovely red oil in the bottom of the pan there? That's exactly what we want. We want a beautiful sheen of that over the top of our laksa at the end. All right, so to that I'm gonna add some chicken stock and then just to boost the flavor even more and to give us some juicy pieces of chicken to add to our soup later on, I'm gonna add some bone-in chicken thighs here as well. Now let this come up to a simmer and you wanna let it go for about 20 or 30 minutes to really let all those flavors develop in there. Now, as that stock's been simmering, I've just been scooping off some of this foamy part. Just get this final little bit here. Don't take too much of the oil, just try and leave that there and just get rid of that white foam. Now, take out your pieces of chicken, save those for later, and strain your stock. And look at that glorious red sheen we've got on the top of that stock and that beautiful red color there. Mm, just perfect. Chicken stock, just store-bought is fine. We're not trying to be a hero today. We're just trying to get things done quickly, but still nicely, but quickly. So that's about half of our laksa soup broth done. Let's get on to the other part now. I want some more oil in a really large pot here and then that paste we made. Now, I've made enough here for a double batch, which means you can pot the rest in the freezer and use it a little later on. So just half of that in here. Wow, and doesn't that smell amazing? All of those aromatics and the spices. Mm. Now, as with any curry paste, I wanna give it some time to fry in that oil, soften all the aromatics, get them to release all of their flavors and essential aromas and oils. Now I'm gonna add in my coconut cream and our beautiful stock. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of seasoning here and a little bit at the end. First off, I want some fish sauce and a dash of sugar, a little pinch of salt. And then let this simmer for about 15 minutes more to let all those flavors make friends in there and become really nice and intense. Now this is smelling amazing. So we're nearly there guys. I'm gonna add in some fried tofu. So have a look here, it's just these little puffy squares of tofu and they'll kind of get really nice and soft and soak up some of that liquid. And then another traditional ingredient here is some fish balls. So you could totally leave these guys out if you can't get to an Asian grocer to find them, but you will find them in traditional laksa dishes. So I like to add them in. And I'll just wait that tofu to soften a little bit and while I'm doing that I'm going to check the seasoning. Mm, wow that flavor is such an explosion it just this so complex all those beautiful aromatics and that creamy coconut I do think I need a little bit more seasoning here so I'm going to add in some fish sauce mm, that really is tasting great now Oh, yum. Now in go my prawns. And you just wanna simmer that a little bit longer until those prawns are cooked through. All right, so let's get started on how we make this magical thing happen. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of oil in my pot. Red curry paste as my base here. There are a lot of similar ingredients in a Thai red curry paste and a laksa paste. A lot of different ones too, but it will work out in the end, trust me. Okay, so you just want the curry paste to kind of sizzle and bloom away in that oil. And that curry paste is also gonna stain that oil a really beautiful deep red color, which to me is one of the beautiful things of a bowl of laksa, is that little sheen of oil on the top. And now the key ingredient here that's gonna transform our Thai curry paste into more of a laksa flavor is some curry powder. So I'm gonna add that in. All 
Okay, I'm gonna put some chicken in here as well and I'm doing some chicken thigh because I do like that extra little layer of fat that comes with some chicken thigh, but you could totally do breast here as well. Now add in some coconut milk. Mm, this is already smelling delicious. Oh, I love that sunshine yellow color. Mm. You know, even a cheats version can make you happy. Now let's also add some chicken stock. Just store-bought is fine. We're not trying to be a hero today. We're just trying to get things done quickly, but still nicely, but quickly. All right, add that in. And I just want to give this five minutes for the chicken to kind of cook and release some of its chickeny juices into the broth and for all of those aromatics and flavors to really make friends in there. So this is smelling really lovely right now. Uh, these next few additions depend on what you have available to you. So you can totally just go with the chicken. I like to add a few extra bits and pieces. I'm gonna add some prawns in here. And for me, Alexa, even the cheats version has to have fish balls. So I know a lot of you are not going to be able to get a hold of fish balls, so you can totally leave these out. But if you can, it would be good to add them in. Now the other non-negotiable for me is puffy fried tofu. I always keep this in my fridge because I love to add it to soups, but obviously, again, you don't need to. Now just wait for those prawns to cook. A couple of minutes. And now here is where we do the all important final seasoning. Always with any kind of Asian noodle soup or curry or laksa, in this case laksa, um, it's the final seasoning that I think is really important. Oh, I love that, that little kick of curry powder is so good. Does need some fish sauce. And a little dash of sugar here. And then just a couple of dashes of salt as well. Let's see. Mm, one more pinch of salt. Ah yes, and now we have it. So we have a really curry powder forward kind of flavour because that's the more laksa flavor, if you like. With wall curry laksa, anyway. That's the flavor I want. And then just in the background, we have the heat from the chilies and the curry paste, and then just a few of those aromatics that I can taste there, but definitely tastes like curry laksa, not like red curry. Magic. So in the meantime, let's talk about our noodles, and I'm using some rice noodles here, but the very thin, flat kind. So you can see here, that's what they look like. If you've just got vermicelli rice noodles, that's fine. Even egg noodles is fine as well. And you just want some rapidly boiling water here and add in your noodles. And once they're nice and tender, just drain them straight into a bowl. And then your laksa soup goes on top. Now don't forget about the chicken that we made earlier in our broth. Just shredded that, I'm gonna pop that on top. And then always a non-negotiable for me, I need an egg in there and some bean shoots. Just a little sprinkling of coriander. Now you want a lime wedge here as well to squeeze over just before you eat. And then as if there wasn't enough flavor and spice here, always you need a little bit of sambal at the end. It's like a spicy chili paste. Okay, so with the noodles, you can really choose your own adventure here. Rice vermicelli is great, egg noodles. I just happen to have some of these ramen noodles in my fridge, you know, the prepackaged ones. So that's what I'm going with today. And make sure you get a mix of your proteins here. I love that here in Asia, we love to mix our proteins. Um, so we want some fish balls and some tofu. Fluffy tofu like soaks up all the soupy liquid. It's so good, such a good addition. And I want some chicken and some prawns. 
And now for that beautiful, magical broth that we've made. Final additions, little boiled egg, some bean shoots, and a little sprinkling of coriander.